<laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> I'm going to assume there's people watching. So uh, does this does this work? Does this work? <laughs> We're going to get going and then uh, just going to open YouTube link up and then I'm going to share it on Facebook. Do, 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 do. Sam That's... looks like he's about to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of high fever to die. And it is just, working. We is working. It's just, right. it's just made me feel quite dizzy, so I thought I'd lie down for a bit. Yeah. It's just off because I looked today when I whilst I was at work, I saw the pollen growing on the trees. I was like, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> hay, fever. I mean. hay, hay fever in February. Fucking hell. I oh, know. I oh. suffer. I suffer with it terribly. So does my daughter, <laughs> to be fair. Just, just share. Well, yeah, she has to take... especially, oh, well. especially when the pollen's really, really high. I'm even worse. It's like a popped a blood, blood vessel in both of my eyes because you know when I'm seizing that much, my eyes are that red. Mm. <laughs> it's awful. It's terrible. Evening so thought... to the people who may or may not be watching. Either live if or not. Got... Yeah. Don't forget you stand on yeah, yeah, yeah. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> it says apparently there's one person watching now, so to it might just it might be me. So to <laughs> whoever's watching I'd imagine these view counters have a bit of a lag in them as well, anyway. So. <laughs> I say who's got YouTube open, who's watching? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got to have the comments open just in case anybody uh so it is here joins us. Is here. Yeah, wait. I'm waiting for the chat to open. This may take a while. We were expecting technical difficulties, despite the huge amount of test runs we've done. It still yeah. doesn't work properly. That's because me, Sam, and Eva here now. I should, I, should have worn, <laughs> I should have worn my uh, jacket to match Nick tonight. <laughs> so I've got the same because I've got the Bellevue jacket as well, like you, Nick. <laughs> And here's here's one I conveniently found on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Two years ago, when I put my phone on this morning, the first of it, the first message of the day was from Nick on Drop the Clutch. Yanovsky's in the craving. Whoop whoop. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see different riders to be truthful. Yeah. yeah, it is. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Like, what selection yeah. of riders we had in, in the UK lately? No, exactly. It's been not very good, has it? So people oh. like Magic and Ty coming back over. And Piotr Pavliki and yep. um, and also Vatlak Milik and, mm -hmm. and all those guys. So it'll be quite interesting, won't it? It's definitely. I think Birmingham coming up and Oxford have definitely yeah. um, opened people's hang on, hang on, eyes. Hang on, hang on. Which Oxford? Which Oxford here? Spires. Ah, I think. which one's that one? Yeah. Premier League it's in the Prem. one. Yeah. We were just saying about Oxford doing all three leagues this season. So as I said, since yeah. I've followed Speedway, I have never known a club could do all three leagues like in a season. Do you know what I mean? Never. I've never heard of it either. But I don't know how far back play. you can go. Yeah. All power to them. Mm -hmm. I thought I've seen a gate sales. They could probably afford it on the turnstiles as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Bellevue probably could technically run three as well because um, we don't have set nights, do we? We don't have stadium availability issues, no. So, so they could potentially do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Is it for championship normally? Something like that. Something like that. I think I don't think the championship and the national league have set race nights. It's just whenever the premiership isn't on. Right. Okay. It was so... Wednesdays mainly last season, though, wasn't it? And um, yeah. Well, that was a big reason for Paul dropping down to the championship, is so they could get a Wednesday race night back. Mm hmm. Yeah. Obviously, I'm really glad that Cy Food in back for Ipswich as well. And... Oh, and Doily. And Doily, yeah. And Tereshenko for Kitty. Yeah. I was, imp I was impressed with Tereshenko last season for um, Peter Brun and that in Glasgow. He was, I was really impressed with him, actually, when he came, first came over. Yeah, but for Ipswich, that makes a very top-heavy side. Yeah. Like, I don't think I've seen a side as top-heavy as Ipswich before. They've still got the top three from last season, Doyle, Sufudinoff and King, haven't they? 
Yeah, and somehow they've managed to fudge Adam Ellison there on the averages, but then they're yeah. left with Keenan Rue, Jordan Jenkins, and Dan Thompson. It's like Bellevue. Yeah, Eric, Riss, at... Eric Riss has left there now, so... Yeah. It's like you look at Bellevue as well. We've gone quite top-heavy with um, the three from last year. Yeah, Kurtz, but I think... Kurtz, Bl- Bewley, and Nidsey, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but Bladorn can hold his own in a, in a string well, position, so can Ben Cook. That's what ben I mean, Cook, but, yeah. you know... With Norwich in the mix as well, you could technically say them four from last year. It's yeah. quite heavy hitting, isn't it? Yeah, that's mm, gonna... true. Yeah, I still want them to release the green sheets. Come on, guys, you haven't got long. <laughs> <laughs> People Mr. keep Stats. writing Birmingham off. Sheffield. The season strong, hasn't but... even started. Oh, sorry, did I well, just swear then? I think no. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for all three responses, yes, no, and I don't know. <laughs> what was the old that, um, Malcolm I know in the middle Bellevue, theme? I know that like Bellevue, that. you know who don't get along, so that's why I'm not. Oh, I don't care to be truthful. Oh, Say it if you want. It's speedway, yeah, go, isn't it? Go, it's, go, go I'm just saying go that their team as well are pretty strong. Aren't they? Well, I've got Wolfenden, the two Holder brothers. And... Is it Sheffield? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well... <laughs> Me and my dad were having this conversation the other night, and um, we were like, "How like how much of a dip has Wuffenden taken recent in recent seasons since he broke well, his neck in 2019?" Yes. I, I still not, think he, he's not really a world class rider I've, anymore. I've, I've said this before. I still don't think he's recovered from it. No, no. and especially so, that smash that he had at the SON in yes. 21, 22. Mm. Yeah, Manchester 21. Yeah, well, we, we were right next yeah. to it, weren't we, Roof? Mm-hmm. That, that's not, not done him any favours, has it? Because didn't he no. break his leg? He fractured his femur in that crash. Well, there I you go, that. Did he, I think he broke some ribs as well, didn't he, in, the, in that as mm. well? Because I know he's definitely, obviously, I'm surprised he's in the Grand Prix. Well, He's in the Grand Prix again this season. I don't know how long he'll last in the GPs now, but he's gonna. I he's got to be careful this season. Oh yeah, you've got three time. British riders in there as well. But the, the difference is, if you want to maintain three British riders, who do you replace them with? But do they want True. to maintain maintain three British riders? That's a question for later in the season, though. So, yeah. at this moment in time, who realistically <laughs> could be the third? No one. There, there isn't a standout, is there? Like maybe Ellis at a push. <laughs> <laughs> he had one race and crashed out. Yeah, maybe Tom Brennan. No, it's way too soon. Way too no, soon. Mm. That's why I say maybe, but you know, yeah, he's... in a few in a few years, but not now. Yeah. yeah so... <laughs> but go, I think dragging this back to Birmingham, we're saying a lot about Birmingham being written off already. I think what work, what what's been what's counting against Birmingham is that they've effectively got three unknowns in the side from the off: Lampard, Pablitsky, and Milik. How are they yeah. going to take to British surfaces? We don't really know. And okay, we've lost Wolverhampton, so that's one of the major technical tracks gone. So, you know, Pablitsky is going to have a, a better time of it. But you have still got Ipswich in there. I think Oxford's still fairly technical, even though it's fairly fairly wide. Leicester is uh, uh, quite technical, isn't it? It used to be, but then they've widened the track out. So it's more of a sort of conventional shape. The corners now are much wider than they used to be. And the They're still a bit tight. Just... You've still got to turn the bike quite hard at Leicester. Yeah, yeah but that was, like, that was yeah. always the thing with Belmont Park, was long, straight, narrow corners. But they've widened the corners out quite significantly in the last few years. True. They've had to, though, haven't they? Because the way the bikes have come along, you think yeah. you, how much in... power they put down on... They're hitting yeah. 60, 70 mile an hour by turn one at Bellevue. Yeah. Nowadays, you come in halfway down the back straight, you've got to shut off. Otherwise, yeah. you just go into the fence. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unless but you're think... um, like Dan Bewley and you literally put the bike on the fences. <laughs> in like the a fence. War... <laughs> no, that was one race. <laughs> 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 but he literally rides Bellevue like a wall of death at times, doesn't he? Oh, oh Tony Ricards and stuff. Phenomenal that round yeah. there. Uh, but yeah, I think, I, I think. Go on. I say part of me is quite glad Wolves has gone just because I didn't enjoy watching Speedway at the track. I'm sad that we've lost the team, mm. but I didn't like the track. Mama Green was always a very weird track. Very tight, weird. technical. It was. 
and, and it was off camber. There was an adverse camber, particularly in the second turn. I remember me and my dad went there in 2017. We were both surprised by how slow the track is. Yeah, because like, a friend of mine said it's not speedway, it's slow way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you consider how small the track is and they're doing the same times as Bellevue. Yeah. It's like you... Uh, and, yeah, and... but it's a smaller track, so the times are quicker than Bellevue. No, they weren't. They were slower. Well, they were, were around they? the same oh. sort of time. But yeah, because they're having to go around the track a lot slower because of the shape of it. True. So they were still pushing nearly 55, 60 seconds per Wolf race. Hampton, yeah. Wolf and it wasn't. Remind, yeah. And it wasn't sort of. It's not. It's not a particular. It wasn't a particularly safe track either. Like, but they rip up the inside of the second turn. So riders hit a berm of dirt and just go flying into the back straight fence. Or you hit grip in the third turn and the adverse camber pulls you into the air fence. It's not, you, you know, you don't get that any other track. Yeah, that's why they say you would have to be good to ride more and more. Yeah. yeah. Or slow, one or the other. Either one works. Yeah. <laughs> Wolverhampton, Wolverhampton, sort, Wolverhampton sort of reminded me, I don't know whether you agree on this, but you probably would. It, it sort of reminded me of Eastbourne. Never saw a race in there. I no. know, although Eastbourne... Eastbourne's a lot bigger and it's not as tight on the corners in particular. So it, it well it may it may ride the same, it's quicker in its own in, in that sense. Because you've got look, more room to move. What is it the Birmingham fans used to call it? Eastbourne the egg. <laughs> <laughs> because turns one and two were tighter than turns three and four. Because all the oh, talks right. about trying to get Coventry back is like, you know, because they're, they're really trying hard, aren't they? They've been, get... they've been trying hard for years. It's... <sighs> Covent... Return for Coventry is an interesting one because that's been going nowhere for years. <laughs> I think like... there's some positivity behind it. Yeah, and then you consider how much work the stadium will need. Yeah, it, but there's somebody the waiting in the wings to buy it and to pump the money into it. Yeah, that's what the sport needs, really. And if it yeah. if it does come back, then that's great. But I don't. It won't be soon. Oxford oh. was in his state before, wasn't it? But now, obviously, they did all that up, and obviously, Workington have recently come back. But now it's in a different place. Now, isn't it? It's not the same place. Yeah, I think Oxford. Oh, Oxford, you not the best comparison in the world because Oxford City Council weren't happy with putting a, like, a housing estate or any other sporting venue on there. They put a covenant on the land instead, saying it must be used for this purpose, which basically forced the hand of the developers. Brandon doesn't have that necessarily. The Rugby City Council keep rejecting planning applications for housing on it on that basis, but they won't just turn around and say, no, this land must be used for this purpose. Which it it makes it harder from a planning aspect because we can't really be sure what's going on. Mm. True. Yeah. But also Brandon Stadium is subject to tons of arson attacks, break-ins over the last few years. I think Brandon Estates was taken to court several times for security failings on the site. It did, and, and just... then the court case got delayed. I, th I don't think it's still actually been tried in court yet. Oh. Probably hasn't, but that it just gets caught up in a legal quagmire that will take years on its own to sort out, never mind yeah. getting the rest of it back. And as well... It's like the... good to see them back before 2030. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon that's doable. Oh, yeah, it is. It's, it's, yeah. it's just a matter of how much work the track would need doing on it when you get the money to pump into it. Very true. And when Brandon Estates are going to sell it. Well, yeah, uh, Saturday the seventh of Nether. So. Yeah. yeah, that's the thirtieth of February. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> no, tomorrow is St David's Day. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Um, I tried to do a little bit of publicity for Speedway the other week. Um, you know that padded seat guy. Yeah, uh, he was at Manchester Giants the other day. So I said to him, oh, you know, Bellevue Speedway next door, I've got some nice padded seats when the Speedway season's on. He went, oh. Yeah. Mm. So, nice. every it's what every fan wants, a padded seat. 
Well, that's his thing, though, isn't it? He goes around like all the hospitality and the VIPs. Oh, I see. Okay. It's on Facebook. He, he, he came <clears> to <throat> the place. Yeah, he's been going around and he like, you know, when you go to football, you get the hospitality before yeah. the game, and then you get to sit in a nicer seat. And yeah, but you get goes around various you get your VIP stadiums, tickets. Dude. Yeah, he goes around stadiums doing that, and he came to the Manchester Giants basketball and did an event there. But he, well, did a vlog i suppose yeah, yeah you're supposed to call it that um but you had to bring his own padded seat for that one because it's just <laughs> uh, it's a fold-out steel chair basically at bellevue for the court side yeah bring your own padding he did it was like a swim float <laughs> with his logo on it <laughs> but i said to him in person and then i put it in the comments on the manchester giants one about bellevue having some nice padded seats yeah so, he walked uh, past me when he came to the Cov Blaze game a few weeks ago, but he had his camera out and he was filming. So I just yeah. said hi and continued walking. As you do, because you Ruth being Ruth, she's like, no, no camera. <laughs> well, he was filming and no offence, he didn't really want to be on the video. Except exactly. the one right in front of you. Mm. <laughs> That's why she pulls the hat right down. I'm hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's left a comment on the YouTube stream with a prediction for the league table. Oh, this I. Is bold. So, uh, first Sheffield, second Ipswich, third Leicester, fourth Birmingham, fifth Bellevue, sixth Kingsland, seventh Oxford. I think they're going to beat Bellevue. Really? Mm. I don't know. Say that one again for me. So Sheffield, Ipswich. Leicester, Birmingham, Bellevue, Kings Lynn, Oxford. Yeah, nah. <laughs> um, um, well, I think the top two might be pretty nailed on, to be truthful. Yeah, I can see that, but it they, they say there's so many unknowns in some of these sides that you can't really be sure how they're right. True. Like Everson's coming back, you've got Yunovsky, Lampart, Pavlitsky, Milik as well. You tracks have changed in the UK in the last sort of five, six years. Not well, yeah, by magic is true. Yeah. Magic won't recognise Birmingham when he goes back. No. He won't no, recognize it's been ten years since he rode Birmingham. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. It's you know completely different surface. Everything about the track and facility will be different now, won't it? Yeah. It's when ten years older. Time, when was the last time you know Ski Road Brum? Ten when years ago. Ten years ago. It would have been yeah, back when for, they were in the Elite League. Was it for, mm -hmm. for Paul? It was for Paul, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. It would have been. Be interesting to see what he, you know, what how and how well he rides Oxford too. Yeah, and like Chris Holder, how long has it been since he's rode? Well, he was was he? He was blown out of the Kings Lynn side in 2017. Yeah, yeah. and I don't know, is he been back since? Well, he was yes because he to... signed at the back end of last season, didn't he? And he and he did sign for oh, Paul. Yeah. He did sign for Paul in 2018, but I think he had an injury or something. Then they signed Peter Kilderman afterwards in 2018. I remember that. Mm. Do you remember that? <laughs> Vaguely, yeah. Chris Holder to Peter Killerman. That's one heck of a downgrade. Is um Oh yeah, didn't Chris, Chris take over? Not the rider he was when he won the world title. Oh 12, no, he is twelve years like, ago. Like a lot of riders, he oh. has one you have one bad injury and you're never the same afterwards. Do you know yeah, what didn't... I reckon it is as well? We I, I don't I I might be wrong, but I have thought this all this time. Right. Since Darcy Ward was still riding, Chris Holder was a better rider, wasn't he? Well, they were Turbo Twins, and yeah. they were they were they were best mates, weren't they? Yeah. And I reckon, may I, I could be wrong, but this is how I think. I think as well. Obviously, the injuries, obviously, he's had some over his time, but I think it since what happened to Darcy Ward has affected him big time. I don't think he's been right since then. I may be wrong. Yeah. Mm. Well, I don't know if you agree. Got to remember, he's an old dog now, though, as well. Yeah, well, yeah. How old is he now? He's got to be about Chris Holder. 
because Jack is obviously Jack's still a young kid, isn't he? Really, he is thirty six. Is he right? That's... Yeah, that's yeah, not don't... old though. Yeah, I was going to say because look at Bomber and Scotty Nichols. But when they, yeah, know, but them two, them two are second string in the in the championship at best. No, I know. But I mean, you know, look at their age and they're still going though. Yeah, because Bomber Although... was still riding riding for Peterborough last year, wasn't he? Yeah, I think yeah. Chris Harris also focusing a lot more on the grass now than on, on, on yes. speedway. Because to be fair, yeah. to be fair, Chris Harris is only forty-one, so he's not that much older. Because mm. Peterborough oh. obviously were in a right mess last season, anyway, weren't they? So, well, they've lost Somebody's their stadium, asking you so... a question on the stream, Nick. Oh, okay. good. Does, does he think Bellevue are as strong as the last two seasons? Um. At this moment in time, I'm unsure because I don't personally know much of Mountain and Cook. So it's whether they come to the plate or not. Um, top of the order, I think we are. But yeah. lower end, I don't think we are at the moment. But as I say, I don't know much of either of them two. Oh, I'd say that's fair enough. Yeah, once I've seen them race a few times and stats start coming in then i can give you a better answer but honestly i don't know because well, somebody asked me a similar question about birmingham and i've said well i'm gonna pass judgment until i've actually watched a meeting because there's no point judging something until you've actually seen it in yeah. person. Well, even even more so with birmingham as we say three unknowns in the side going into the season and not only that, you've just come up from the championship to the Prem, so it's a completely different kettle of fish as well. Not that much of a kettle of fish. True. Mm. It's Monday nights now I mean, instead of Wednesday, I guess. Yeah, and to be fair, this year, the Premiership but, and the Championship, there, there is actually some divide between the two now, but for the longest time, there wasn't. Mm. True. I suppose a lot of Prem riders were doubling up, weren't they? So... Mm. Still do. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, we've got four whole viewers on YouTube. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> Hello. Oh, no. I am in this box. <laughs> Help me out. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, also, how about uh, Kingsley inside this season as well? Do you think that looks a bit better than it has been, or is it still not right? Would you say Dog Turd looked better than Kingsley in the last few years? <laughs> um, well, okay. Usually, there's only like... got one Brit in the side, and his row. Um, yeah, ooh. that's it. Yeah, Musilak. Musilak, I think, will ride Kingsley well. It's Similar-ish to Swindon, maybe a bit wider, a bit bit quicker, less grippy. But it it's, it between that and Sheffield, it's close enough. So he, he'll probably ride it well. Everson's he's been, he's been with Kingsley for a long time, but hasn't been back in the UK for some time either. So <clears throat> he may take some warming up, but he'll he'll get back to where he was. Yeah, mainly mainly charging the tapes yeah. in the first race. Basso, Palmtoff, Tarasenko, all strong enough riders. Anders Rowe is strong enough at Rising Star as well. So the big unknown really is Voidjewa. Yes, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, him. They signed him at Peterborough for, well, he didn't He didn't last long at Peterborough, did he, last season? Mm. So I think that's the big yeah. unknown, but... I, I, th I think it, on on paper that's a strong enough that that's that's a strong one to five. Mm. Yeah, because everyone there has ridden mm. in Britain for the last couple of seasons, haven't they? Albeit maybe for different teams, but yeah, with the possible exception of Everson, I don't remember the last time he rode in the UK, but I don't think it was recent. Yeah, but obviously Toby was up at Sheffield. Um, yeah. The other one, I can't remember his name now. The other Polish lad. Uh, Wojciech. No. Tarasenko. Oh, he's Russian. 
Oh, is he Russian? Sorry, my yeah. bad. He was in at Glasgow, was it? Or Redcar? I think it was Glasgow. Yeah, he signed, obviously, Peterborough and Glasgow last season. Yeah, he did. Mm. Uh, there you go. So he's had uh, championship and premiership track time. So I was impressed few... with him last season, actually. You know, there's a few names there that could spoil the parade. Yeah. I think the question it really becomes is, is Kings Lynn challenging for the title this year or are they just looking to get into the playoffs? I'd say playoffs. Yeah. But that's what I we've seen a lot. I think from... the playoff material. It depends if they can... Uh... The thing... The if... Yeah. It's too easy for us to just say on paper they are a strong side because the True. issue isn't the issue isn't strong versus weak riders this year. It's strong riders versus complete unknowns. Yeah. True. Because there may be a few of these unknowns that turn out to be absolute pocket rockets. Mm. On that was, point, uh, on that point, Ashton Bowden. I was mm. just yeah. going to mention him for Oxford. Yeah. Ashton Belgian, I was actually really because I mean uh, last season when he was with Oxford in the championship and he did Leicester in the National League, he was in the National League, he was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But I watched him in the youth. He says he's about sixteen, isn't he? Something like that. Yeah, Um, he was still in school last year when he won the youth title. Let's put it that way. (laughs) So I'm surprised that he's actually in the Premiership this season because I thought he'd be a little bit too soon for him at the moment. I don't know how if you agree, but we'll see how he goes. Yeah, the the thing is, is that he made such a big splash in the championship; it was inevitable he would get picked as a rising yeah. star. Yeah, oh. I'm not sh- the class. The class of rider this year is that bit that much higher than he probably is out of his depth this year. If he'd have come in last year on the same skill level that he's got this year, probably not. He probably what's would have his, survived. But what's his average at the moment? He's a rising star, but he'll come in on a two point, I think. Because it'll yeah. be new, it'll be new to the league, and it comes in on two point average. You get the teams up. Let's have a gander. So they haven't, they haven't published the green sheet yet. So this is going to come from the rule book. Because I... say... no, I'm just did... looking on the British Speedway website at the team declarations. Yeah, the did new ones are 24 that, haven't yeah. come out. Pardon? Did we say who the highest average was in the Premiership? It's is it was it Saifuddin? Yeah, it was Saifuddin like, off last year. Yeah, it was a like, I think it was like a 10.13 or something like that. Wow. Brilliant money. Flip switch. He was just not book I, I don't think he missed a meeting last season for them. I wouldn't know. I'd have to look back. Uh... 10.1, yeah. Frankie, you're right. Was it 10.10, was it? Yeah. Fair enough. Uh... That's that's some average, that, isn't it? Yeah, I'm surprised they've managed to fit the top three in and uh, Adam Ellis. That's what Frankie was saying earlier, though. They've mm. somehow managed to crowbar Adam Ellis in. Yeah. And you used the phrase yeah. fudged him in. Adam Ellis's last average last season was 5.71. So it could work. Well, what was... You said ten point one zero. What was Doyle's average? Nine point one two. And then Danny uh, King's nine... was seven point two three. Well, that's reduced. F- uh, that's reduced. What five percent as a British rider? So. Yeah. That's a, that's a point. Doyle's a dual citizen now. Is he entitled to the average reduction or not? Depends if he's riding on a British license. I think he might still be on his Australian license. Ah, okay. Fair um, enough. I know he's eligible for the British Championship now. Oh, good lord. <laughs> <laughs> championship just says, lol, no, your average is too high. <laughs> championship you, says, here, Doily, before we've even started. <laughs> yeah. Mind you. I meant the, like being British champion. Yeah. He's eligible for that now. He's a dual citizen. Well, I th- it's just still, you should go back to being British and Commonwealth champion, but there you go. Oh, here's one for you. Do you think we'll see Woofy in the British Championship this year? No. 
he withdrew for he withdrew for one reason. That's because he felt he'd won it too often and he wanted to give the young ones a chance to win it. He didn't want to dominate the tournament. Mm. Okay, what did he win three back to back or something? Yeah, something right. like he won. That, yeah. He won. He won three back to back and then said, "I'm not competing in it anymore." Although to be fair, that might have been partly coupled up with his further boycotts of British League and then Team GB because he felt the BSPA weren't doing enough for young riders. Yes, but since so, then he's come back to do the Craven. He's riding for GB again. Yeah, he's now riding in GB again. So yeah, but no, just, again this year I wouldn't be surprised if he turns around and says no, let the young ones do it. No, that's fine. It was just a, you know, a thing for conversation and whatever. Do you think we could possibly see him riding? No, yeah. because uh, Bewley's on a hat trick now, isn't he? Yes. He could potentially. Yeah, I can't see past him at the moment. I don't know. It depends if Ruthless comes over and rides as well as he can. I think they still say the rules are you must be part of a, you must be assigned to a British club or something. It's complicated now because they've gotten rid of the whole qualification structure. Mm -hmm. It's just like, yeah, it's like the top 14 in the Premiership by CMA plus two wild cards or something like that. It's right. Weird. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's weird. I suppose that makes it a bit more fair because then you can't have the likes of Robert Lambert riding in Poland and Sweden and whatever all year and then coming over to do the one meeting and dominating it. Yeah, but I still think True. there should be that I still think there should be some kind of qualification structure. No, that's what I mean. The way they've done it now makes it fair. Yeah. But you say so you could do that with a qualification structure as well, why not? Yeah. Because then riders are actually earning their place. And of course, I think a lot's been made as well about the British final becoming like a multi series event. I think that's not really needed. What, when so, would we fit the fixtures in? Uh, that's the next question. <laughs> what they, like they did with the pairs? I was, was going to say that I was going to say the Jubilee Trophy final, but also <laughs> that. Yeah, where they did a round at each thing and then they narrowed it down to. Glasgow withdrew, so it just became Paul versus Leicester, and that still hasn't gone ahead. Oh, really? No. <laughs> no. It was meant to go ahead last year, but then it got rained off. It because they put it in October. Twice? They put it twice. They put it in October. It so was meant to be do? at the start oh. of the season. It got rained start off, of but year. it never happened. Try and no. squeeze it in this year and then do another one. <laughs> it probably will do. I doubt it. It's British Speedway, Ruth. <laughs> I guess see anymore. <laughs> the 2022 trophy has not been decided two years later. Welcome to <laughs> British Speedway. <laughs> oh, oh dearie me. Yeah. Oh dear. Indeed. Okay. Wow. Um, but yeah, I can't. I, I, there's a part of me that wonders whether Wuffinder would want to do the British final again, but isn't uh, just out of sheer principle more than anything yeah. else i wouldn't be surprised if that is the case but at the same time i also wouldn't be surprised if like he he, he thinks genuinely thinks that he's done it enough he does, it doesn't matter anymore he doesn't want to be someone who just he just continually at the top true but he would be eligible because he'd probably yeah. have a top average oh yeah comfortably oh mm -hmm. yeah after the way he rode last season and then obviously coming into this season he's He's going to do well for Sheffield again, isn't he? There's no two ways. Mm. I'm sort of hoping that him riding over here again sort of has a positive impact and he could um, go and actually do something in the Grand Prix. But I don't know. <laughs> I'm less sure. The big thing about always riding in the UK was the variety of track that you get. You have yeah. your tight technical tracks, your wide technical tracks, and your open fast tracks as well all sort of all within the same league within the same nation you don't really get that on the continent nearly to that extent definitely not in poland no in poland extent. they're all they're yeah, not too. all but they're very glass like aren't they and yeah fast. maybe to an extent in sweden but not nearly like not nearly to the same level so that was always the yeah. big thing about riding in the uk that has to a large extent gone because of the selection of track that they're using for the Grand Prix now. And you think you've got four I think you've got well you've got three purpose built Polish tracks, you've got 
uh, Prague, which is fairly wide, flat. Uh, Riga, similarly, although it seems to have more ruts in it than a pancake. Um, hopefully, they'll sort that out for next year. But then, you, you know, also Voyens, again, flat, moderately technical, but not really. You know, it, it mm. there is much less variety now. The only the, the only surfaces really that riding in the UK could benefit you one of the temporary ones. Yeah, just because they are that they are that bit smaller, and so, they do chew up. Uh, yeah, especially when it's warm. Yeah, but he might. The thing I was sort of getting at is, but he might find those skills again to see. Like we go back to like twenty when he won his world titles, and the way he was just cutting up the inside. Yeah, I don't know if it's just me, but I haven't seen that from him for a while. No, but again, like you say, yeah. since he last won a title. He had that really bad accident where he broke his neck. He broke his femur at Bellevue. Um, the SO in the year after Bellevue, didn't he have a big mishap as well with his back? He fell, off, over he fell, off, he fell off a cycle, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He, I think he got hit by a car on a push bike and he ended yeah. up having to miss the back end of that as well. So yeah, the guys yeah. just had like a run of bang, 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 bang. Plus Cardiff last year, he broke his hand. Yes. Yeah, that can have a big effect. So you know, when you're constantly injured, it's it's not going to do you any favors, is it? It's not going to put your mind in the right psyche because, oh, if I go out and do this, I'm going to get hurt again. Yeah, that's more yeah. time off the bike, less money in my pocket, whatever. However, it works for him. Yeah, dare I say he's setting up to retire? No, no, you don't think no. he won't want to become a rider like. Uh... Chris Harris or Scott Nichols are constantly relied on a wild cup pick to get into the GPs or yeah. the GP challenge, but he wouldn't retire necessarily from the sport in the way you think of like Mark Laram does. Like yeah. you never, yeah. you, you never hear a Mark Laram anymore. If anything, he's probably not setting up to retire, but I think if he, if he can't regain the form he had five, six years ago, then he might look towards sort of being more involved in the youth setup at team GB. Mm hmm. I could see that. Well, he did say that he really enjoyed it in the SOM when Australia won it because he was acting as like team management, wasn't he? And mm. helping mm. Um, Bewley, Lambert, and um, was it Ellis? Yes. Well, to... Oh, yeah, no, it would have been that one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Australia won it, didn't they? And GB came second, I believe. Yeah. And we got Wolfie... robbed. I don't but, know, someone fluffed the gate positions. But yeah, Woofie yeah. acting as management that for that the remainder of that thing. And he said that he really enjoyed that. Yeah, but I'd be surprised if he did that full time for the seniors over the under twenty one side. Oh yeah, no, I think he'd go more youth side because like he said that he doesn't want to keep doing X, Y, and Z because he doesn't want to be all this and he wants to give the kids a push. Hmm. This is a controversial opinion, right? Oh, I. We never had one of them would, before. Would Ty Woffington possibly take over as GB under twenty one team manager just because Neil Vatch is a bit of an idiot? And I mean that in the politest way possible. Yes, but not soon. I think for in the moment, I've got a better pick for under twenty one manager. Oh, okay. Good tell. Gary Adams. No, Gary Abel. <laughs> That's a good shout. I don't that know why you suggested one. Lee Adams. He's currently in Muldura with a with a severed spinal cord. But... I said Pete Adams. Oh, Peter Adams. Yeah. Mm. Ty's manager. Mm. Wolves manager. Mm. He's not doing anything except for Wolves, I don't think. And if they're not back within like the next season or two, I reckon he might just pack it in altogether. Mm. What about he's, he's Wolfie's manager though, isn't he? So Yeah. What about Neil Middleditch? Former GP former GB uh, manager in is his own right, coming back mm. for the youth side. How well would that work? It'd be interesting. I'd to say see. it'd work because he's got knowledge and experience, hasn't he? working yeah. with the senior side so why couldn't he apply that to the juniors yeah i would suggest alan rossiter but he's a controversial candidate yeah. straight um, away like 
better off not bothering. True. Why did he pick Chris Harris over fucking Dan Bewley like that year? I have no idea. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Frankie's Thoughts. <laughs> well, it was such a stupid decision. Wolfenden's been Wolfenden's been ruled out. There's no hope you're gonna win the Speedway of Nations in Togliatti with with well, effect Craig Cook, Robert Lambert. So you may as well give the young rider a go. Why not? Rather than just having Chris bloody Harris tiddling around at the back every race. <laughs> Made mm. absolutely naff all sense. Anyway, uh, stop complaining about that now. It's in the past. <laughs> it's been gone. Oh, love it. Yeah. We can talk about the GPs as well. I and mean, we've, we've said a lot about the British League. Um, um... I can't see past anybody winning another world title than Bartosz Schmarzlik. <laughs> now you're swearing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I am going to make, right, I'm going to make a bold prediction for this season for Schmarzlik. Oh, go on. He gets injured. Uh, yeah, his dirty oh. riding finally catches up with him. Well, I'm going to disagree with you on there. He does. He's not dirty riding. He's very much Nicky Pedersen. People think he rides dirt. Uh, people think he rides dirtily, but he's just really hard on the bike. Oh, mm. yeah. He's just. I've not even seen him had an injury. No, and I think he's gotten very lucky in that sense in the last few years, particularly, particularly last year and a year before, where he's becoming. He, he's riding the bike a lot more aggressively. Mm. Yeah, I, I know. It's yeah. I mentioned this on a previous podcast last year. He was excluded more times in the heats last year than the Grand Prix in any other time I've seen him. What uh, yeah. what what I was for, furious about was um, Warsaw last se um, last season. You know, in the final when they excluded Doyle instead of Smarshik. Ah, that, do you know? You know? You know what? I know Smarsh exactly what you mean. That one's always an interesting one to discuss. There's it, it. There's always a big thing made about referees affected by the home crowd, but I don't think that's what happened truly in that meeting. It's not necessary. It wasn't necessarily a fifty-fifty call, but you were it. It wasn't as clear cut as people were making it out. Smarzlik mm. had clearly called past Doyle on the back straight. The difference was was that he hadn't clearly passed him, and Doyle was trying to cover the move. So then you have to mm. ask the question, has Doyle tr tried to cover it too late and hit the back of Smarzlik, or has Smarzlik gone out and hit the front wheel of Doyle? True. I for don't my, know. For my, opinion, since then. For, <laughs> for my opinion, yeah. I thought the decision was utter crap, but never mind. I think Jackaroo's going to be one to watch this year in the GPs. He will be up there. Jack Holder. Year. Yeah, providing he, will... he doesn't get injured again like he did last year, I think he'll give the top dogs a run for their money again like he, he did I, last year. He will, he will be up there next year, I reckon. Um, mm. He he just blew me away last year in the GPs mm. until the injury, obviously. And then, as we were saying about Woofy, you're just not the same, are you? Especially with a wrist slash hand in injury. No. Uh, yeah, true. Wolfenden's think... just gone, isn't he? He's no, he's still in there. Well, yeah, but you'll never win a world title. Can't say, can't say never. No, never can, yeah, you, never you say can never. Well you can't in there. Yeah, but you've just said he's going to get injured, so you know, never say mm. never. It depends on whether he does or not. I think other... <laughs> <laughs> the biggest, the biggest surprise for me in the Grand Prix is she's Dominic Cubera. Yeah. Yes. Now people will disagree with me, but I think he's out of his depth. A little bit, yeah. I, say, I thought, bit. I thought a couple were last year, as a whole. Yeah, mm. I can't the think of names off the top. Of... Well, Kim Nielsen was grossly out of his depth last year. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so oh. was Oliver Burnson in his first season. I, even Magic seemed to be out of his depth last year. Oh, I don't know what happened to him? Was I... Shocking. See, the, the only the only other rider I can see have such a massive fall from grace is Christoph Kasprzak. 
That's not a comparison anyone wants. Mm. Oh, God, no. No, but I, I literally don't know what happened to Magic. It was like he was permanently concussed last year and I forgot how to ride his bike. To be honest, I think he was taking lectures from Christoph Kasprzak. <laughs> that's the only way I can explain it. Like, <laughs> yeah, how, I, how not to set up the bike. Like, You put the big sprocket on the front and the little one on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this going nowhere? <laughs> <laughs> How about Anders yeah. Thompson last season? Mixed bag, I find, with Anders Thompson. Mm. Yeah. He had some good um, races and some poor ones. Yeah, but he also did get quite... He, he, well, thrown over the fence, let's say. He's quite a character, though, Thompson. Mm. Um, who else uh, Who else they got in the Grand Prix? Well, Thompson's Angus, not in there. Angus Lebedev's. Out of his depth. He was out. He's another one out of his. Yeah. Mm. He's been. Well, I, I was hearing that Lebedevs wanted to come over to British Speedway and, and ride for a club. That's what I heard very recently. But I do believe there's rumours circulating. I, he, yeah. I hear Workington still looking for a rider. I don't know whether you heard that rumour as well about Angus Lebedev wanting to come over to British Speedway yeah. to do I it. hadn't, but I'm not surprised by it, particularly. But Well, speaking of Workington... Selena! That was That's an interesting you. one. Workington's <laughs> team this season. I'm absolutely buzzing for her. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely Selena buzzing for her. She's and the fact that she's the riding the... the championship, yeah, and the fact she's riding the Craven as well. It's like, come cool on, girl. Mm. What's, how do you pronounce her name again? Is it Lieberman? That's it. <clears throat> I believe I'm probably going to get shot online now. <laughs> <laughs> Who else have they got in the jeep? They've got a uh, Kai Huckenbeck. What do you think of him? Uh, therefore, German presence. You've got a rounded um, land shirt, you may as well have a German rider. I mean, to be fair, I, I, I rate him better than Martin Smolinski. Do you think? Yeah. But not it, it's it's close between the two, but neither of them... I, I'd be surprised if he gets in the top six. Mm. In much yeah. the same way, I'd be I, I'd be similarly surprised if Smolinski got in the top six on the same lineup. But then again, you've got to look at the top six and the GPs this year anyway, haven't you? Because who have you got? Smarslick, Fast Freddy... Um, Bewley, Lambert. Uh, True. Oh, who else is there? Jackaroo, obviously. Mm. Mm. That's five riders there that are going to go great guns. Yeah. Matson, yeah. Yeah. That's six. Potentially Yanofsky. Potentially no, Woofy. Has he not in it at all this year? No, Yanofsky's been left out. Oh, Mikkel, right. Mikkel, yeah. Mikkel, Mikkel Mickelson's back in it. Yeah. yeah. Again, hit and miss. Um, Zeman Wozniak's in it. Is is he hit and miss? Or do you think Wozniak can be him? Mm, he's yeah, a ginormous baby, from what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my dad will be more qualified to answer any questions on him because he follows Gorjov. But he's he's an okay rider on his day. He's made the Polish side a few times on the, on the Speedway of Nations. Mm-hmm. So he has mixed it up on the world stage with these riders, just not necessarily an individual competition. Apparently, consistently as well. He's mm. a ginormous baby and a really sore loser, but that's just what I've heard. Aren't most men? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah very Joe, just, true. Just throwing getting, it out there. Getting flashbacks <laughs> to that time Nicky Pedersen kicked his chair at Voyance. Like. <laughs> How about uh, what's his name from the Czech Republic? Jan Yang. Kivet. Hmm. It, Too early. Uh, I'm not so sure on that. I think it's about right. He won't. Mm-hmm. He, he won't necessarily be world champion or anything like that. He'll do good to make the top six. But I don't necessarily think he's out of his depth. He's had wild card and reserve positions in the GPs long before now, and um, has been able to mix it up as well as in Speedweb Nations. Yeah, you've got sure. Dudek as well, haven't you? Have we? Yes, Dudek. I don't know if he's in it. Or just No, he's not. Oh, is he not in it this year? Wow. No, I, I, it might be one of the substitutes, actually. Yeah, I think he's one of the subs. Oh, Max, right, Rick okay. is, Max Rick is one of the substitutes, isn't he, as well? 
Yeah. Wow. I've got 50 million tabs and here. Luke, Luke, tabs Luke, Luke Becker is another one. Who's um, And Dimitri Berger is another su substitute. Somebody's asked on the YouTube stream what our opinions are on the championship teams for this season. Okay, we can discuss that. But before we do that, I'll just outline the qualified substitutes of Max Frick, Kim Nielsen, Matt Sayanovsky, Rasmus Jensen, Luke Becker, Dimitri Berger and Matthias Cherniak. So there's no D-deck whatsoever? Wow. Right, championship Tom, sides. <clears throat> Tom Brennan to have a substitute spot. Pardon? I could have made the argument for Tom Brennan to have a substitute spot. I mean, you could have done, but who do you replace? Yeah, good yeah. point. Anyway, championship. Yeah. <clears throat> now, I'm looking, I think the big unknown for us is Workington there. Three riders in there. I have no idea how they're going to ride the British League. And our championship sides aren't all finished yet. So this is a bit incomplete. It's just Kavat Plymouth need to replace Kavati, don't they? Yeah, uh, they've not done that yet. No. Bloody hell, okay. But yeah, so there's three riders in Workington. I have no idea how they're going to perform. Let's have a look. Who were they? Uh, Tate Zishk, Anti Vulas, and Selena Lieberman. Um, I have no idea how any of those are going to perform on the British circuit. They've gone with a fair few unknowns. Mm. Lieberman is good on the European shale. Yeah, that's nominally meaningless when you go to Paul. No, I know that. I was just saying, um, she's. Done a few days on Bellevue, didn't she? Go up to Scunthorpe, potentially, yeah, or somewhere in so. that area, and do a few days up there on the mm. women's thing that they brought out last year. The, the FIM women's thing, or something like that. Yeah, the women's speedway tournament thing, mm. or whatever. She's been around a few tracks in the UK and absolutely yeah. flown from the footage that I've seen and what I've bound from talking to her at the flat track meeting last year mm. uh, other, yeah, than, other than that my, my two standouts in the championship there this year have got to be scumbob and red car they just look the strongest on paper <coughs> let's have a look so scumbob is simon lambert I'm... luke harrison jake allen carl howarth Nathan Ablett, Michael Pontoft, and Connor Mountain. Mm. And then Red Car is Charles Wright, Jason Edwards, Danny King, Connor Bailey, Jake Mulford, Ben Trigger, and Jonas Knudsen. Scunthorpe above Red Car for me. Yeah. Both sound strong. Yeah, I think Red yeah. Car have got the better number one in Charles Wright. Um, but, but it'll be a good first race great. when those two sides meet. Yeah, but that's thanks. if Charles Wright could stay fit and finish the season. Because the, last, <laughs> the last three seasons, maybe four seasons, he's not mm. completed a full season, has he? Mm. But yeah, for strength and depth, I think Scunthorpe have the advantage. I think Paul slightly lack um, the bottom end, but I could be wrong because they've got Max Perry and Sam Hagen at reserve, but uh, I normally I normally trust that Neil Middleditch knows what he's doing, but they've included Tobias Thompson and the last time he rode in uh this country it was pretty stop start, so I don't know. Hmm. It was for it was for Birmingham, wasn't it? It was. He's uh, he's yeah. also a Birmingham asset, so I'll be keeping an eye on him. Because uh, Plymouth, we were saying that Plymouth haven't got um, heat leaders, have they? Uh... Ben Barker, Jacob, Carl Newman. No, it's just no. Barker and Newman. And I mean, Whoever this is the championship. Number right? one is when they source one. That'll be well. At the moment, their number one is Ben Barker. Yeah, candidate to finish wooden spoon. Yeah. <laughs> Would 
Maybe. But yeah, I think I think this year definitely that there is much more of a divide between the championship and the premiership, which would make it more interesting to watch because it isn't just here's the same riders on different tracks for different sides on a different night. Yeah. Um yeah. there's still a lot there's still a lot to be said about doubling up, but let's not get into that, otherwise we'll be here all night. I mean I have got all night, but I haven't. I love the way he looks over at his watch. I have got all night. <laughs> I haven't. But yeah, I think I think this year it's definitely very it's a very even championship. But it, there's a lot more lot more new faces coming up than there have yes. been in previous seasons. It's not just the premiership version two with uh troy bachelor who can actually ride yeah that that was always i think for the last few years that has been like the biggest difference in the premiership and the championship is whether troy bachelor can actually score points so uh, yeah i'm not sure if I'm not... sorry if we're going down the leagues and <clears throat> what do you think to the new national league format well uh, what on earth is going on with scunthorpe and sheffield like, oh, no. is, it Scun- is it Scunthorpe or is it Sheffield? Pick one. Depends what night of the week they're racing. No, it's both. That's what you're going about. Is it Scunny mm. or is it- That's what I said. Depends what night of the week they're racing. Yeah. And no, then it's right- Scunfield. Oh. Or is it Chef? <laughs> or is it Chef? Chef <laughs> <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it's nice to see that they've got a team between them. Hmm. True. And there's a, a big thing's been made about this whole like Premiership Junior side, which is sort of, I think, has kind of forced the issue with Sheffield because they're now so they kind of have to have a side in the National League as well now, uh, yeah. or this weird other contest thing that I can't really get my head around. Which I think they've just, I think they've I just kind of system or something. I don't yeah, some something weird. They couldn't just say they, they couldn't they couldn't have just taken my suggestion of every side has a youth side or the lowest ranking riders from each side goes for six heats at the end of the meeting. Let's have more fun. Yeah. That was the old second half sense. thing. Yeah, basically. But the problem well, is starting to do that on certain races, aren't they? They've said mm. well, they're gonna they're gonna try to. I get the feeling oh. the curfew on some some tracks is gonna start causing issues. Uh, yeah. more than it more than it already does for some tracks because yes. as much as everyone liked to poo poo frank ebden as a referee in the 80s and 90s he knew how to get a meeting going true i'm, lo- I'm looking at the national league teams uh i mean that's actually riding this season this blimey it's just so because i it's because obviously Considering Belgium... what it used to be it's a bit shit. yes well it, it is cult. It, it, it is called the National Development League. Still, but considering when you think about what it used to be instead of what it is now, mm. it's a bit shit in comparison. Mm. Bellevue, Bellevue Colts, Edinburgh, Leicester Cubs, Middlesbrough, um, Oxford Chargers, and obviously Scunthorpe and Sheffield. Mm. Where are Middlesbrough riding? Red car, I think. Uh, oh, red, car, car. Yeah. red car. That makes a bit more sense. <laughs> <laughs> Red car speedway is actually in Middlesbrough, not red car. Just saying. Mm. But yeah, there's like the National League. We're talking about it being very weak, but it is. This is very much what the National League was about. There's a lot of young, right, young and upcoming riders in here. Mm-hmm. There's not much in the way of doubling up between the Championship and the National League. Like, True. this is what we want. The biggest change to the National League this year really is that there's no playoffs. Yeah, it's just a straight shootout, isn't it? You ride mm. each other twice and then winner takes all, basically. Yeah, but it's I think it's trying... because... The it... big issue the National League has is just trying to get rid of the riders that just ride there because they feel like, oh, yeah, I can get a ride in the National League. I'm not going anywhere, but I'll just go and ride in the National League. That's like riders who get stuck at championship level and just don't progress any further. Yeah, because yeah. you get a few riders that just stick it at National League level because they're good at National League level. Uh, hmm. But, um, <laughs> ben Morley. Um, <laughs> but 
Oh, that cough, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, because it stopped the former Birmingham mascot, Billy Bug, getting a spot in the National League because yeah. a team had contacted him. But then they went with somebody else. I think it was Danny Phillips. Mm. He's been in the National League for donkey's years and he hasn't gone any further. Yeah. That's why I part think... of me is happy that Paul Bowen did what he did last year. Well, go on The Apprentice. No. Um, <laughs> and fail halfway, <laughs> halfway through the season, he pulled out, didn't he? Because he said he's got uh, too many other commitments and gave that Jack Schmelt. Jack yeah. Schmelt? I think, I don't know. Yeah, I believe he's back at the Colts this season, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah, but he pulled out mid-season, said he's got too much other stuff going on. Jack came in, rode really well, and he's got the opportunity to try again this year. Mm. Uh, I think that was brilliant. It's half eight. Should we wrap up? Can do. Because we've been here for an hour. Unless anybody's got any... Sam, shut up. ...else to mention... <laughs> well, I was going to go off on a tangent about the Speedway of Nations, but that can wait. No, we, we've got. <laughs> I'm in the middle of organising a predictions episode. Oh, brilliant! People. Brilliant. So I'll uh, mention that in the WhatsApp group, but um, yeah, we'll get that sorted out and possibly record that next week. Nice. But yeah, I'll get the details sorted and we can do that. But yeah, if um we want to wrap it up and nobody's got anything else to talk about, we'll leave it there. Cheers, everybody. Thanks nothing. for joining us on our first ever live stream. We hope you enjoyed season two. And it We've starts. got stuff in the works. <laughs> Hopefully the first episode will be soon. But for those that missed the live stream, I will be editing it and it will be going out on the streaming services and it will be available to watch on YouTube as well. So if anybody fancies watching it back, you can. But, yeah. Well, anybody else got anything to say? This is Drop the Clutch Season 2. Let's get this off the... Let's get the tapes up. Yeah. Let's yeah. fucking go! All right, Wolfie, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch you guys on our first episode of season two. See you soon. Ciao for now. Goodbye. Ciao, ciao. I'm Zoom Paco Castagna. <laughs>